In this video, I wanna show you how to use the compressor within the Fruity Limiter. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com. If you're planning on doing any sort of compression within FL Studio, I definitely recommend using the compressor within the Fruity Limiter as opposed to just using the straight Fruity Compressor. The Fruity Compressor is an older plugin and it doesn't give you the same visual feedback that the Fruity Limiter does. So when it comes to actually using compression, there are a couple reasons why we would want to. One of the main reasons would be for some sort of vocal performance or an instrument performance, any sort of live recording where the dynamics are are a little bit spread out and kind of all over the place. Personally, I produce a lot of electronic music. I'm not doing a whole lot of live recording, so I don't really have to use a whole lot of compression when it comes to virtual instruments and MIDI and drum samples, etc., etc. Another common usage of compression is to kind of glue things together. So a lot of times we'll use a compressor on our master channel in the mastering process in order to once again tame the dynamics a little bit and just kind of glue everything together make them sit closer together within the mix. There are a couple other reasons you may decide you want to use compression such as sound design, maybe you want to beef up some drum samples, but in this tutorial I'm going to be using an acapella in order to illustrate how you might want to use your compressor. So what I have going on is an acapella from a group called Cooked Sushi. They did a couple hooks for me for some of my beats. They're really awesome. I got a million started a van. I put the ice on my wrist cause I can. This is the acapella that they sent me with effects and stuff already on it. I'm sure they probably added some compression already onto it. But as you can see with this waveform, there's a couple areas that are a little bit quieter than these areas up here, and especially over here. Potentially we can tame the dynamic range of this vocal performance just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and go to our mixer and we'll add on the fruity limiter and then we can go into our compressor settings. First things first, this plugin is resizable so we can make it a little bit bigger, which is kind of nice. And just so you know, the limiter is not gonna kick in unless something goes above the threshold, which in this case, the ceiling is set to zero decibels. So you should never be mixing above zero decibels anyway. So there shouldn't be any reason for the limiter to kick in. However, if you are worried about it for some reason, you can just bring the ceiling up and then there's no way the limiter is ever gonna be engaged. Let's go ahead and hit Alt and then click to bring this back to zero and we can go into our compressor settings. Now, when it comes to setting a compressor, the first thing you need to be aware of is the threshold. And what I like to do is kind of take a listen to the track and get an idea of where the audio sits and how far down we're gonna to have to actually set the threshold. So let's go ahead and take a listen. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. Okay, cool. So now we can go ahead and click on the threshold and bring this down to a point where it sits right around here. Uh, this is probably a good starting point. I'm gonna actually bring this down a little bit farther to about negative 22 dBs. And then again, the compressor is still not actually going to work until we set the ratio. So the ratio determines how much compression is actually going to take place. By default, it's set to one to one, which basically means it's canceling out. There's not gonna be any compression. If I were to set this to a two to one ratio, what that means is that for every two decibels of input gain, we're gonna get one decibel out. So for example, if I have 10 decibels of input gain, I'm gonna get five decibels back out of that. And to be honest, the mathematics are really not that important. You don't necessarily need to know the exact ratios and how that all works. As long as you understand that the higher the ratio you go, the more compression you're getting. And eventually you get up to about 10 to one and it becomes limiting at that point. So 10 to one up to 20 to one is really considered limiting. And there are uses for that. However, when it comes to vocal performance, a good starting place is about three to one. That's where I usually like to set it. And then let's go ahead and take a listen. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to get some compression here, and you can see in the purple and then also here in the line how much compression we're getting. And you can probably hear it as well. Now, if I were to set the threshold down a little bit more, and I can also bring the ratio up a little bit more, I wanna show you what it would sound like with even more compression. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. 
Okay, so you can probably hear that a lot better in terms of the compressor actually really attacking the sound and bringing it down. We start to get this sort of pumping sensation, and that is not what you want in a compressor. You definitely don't want to over compress things to that point. This can also happen with limiting sometimes. If you go too far above the threshold, you start getting this pumping sensation. So let's go ahead and bring the threshold back up. I'm going to put it at about negative 23 dBs, and then I'm going to bring the ratio back down. Let's try about four to one this time. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. Okay, so I think I'm still getting a little bit too much. I'm gonna go back to the three to one, the original, and uh, I'm gonna leave it. So I took out a, an extra dB in terms of the threshold. I set it a little bit lower, but the ratio I'm gonna keep at three to one. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. Downfall. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. I think that's a pretty consistent sounding vocal, but it doesn't sound overly compressed. It doesn't sound like we're losing all the dynamics in the track. Now let's go ahead and move on to the envelope section where we have the attack and release. And the attack basically controls how quickly the compressor is going to kick in. So when I bring this up, it's gonna kick in a lot slower. Let's go ahead and listen and I'll kind of illustrate this. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. So hopefully you can see this. It's, it's coming down a little bit slower than if I were to just have it all the way down. And I think I spent too long, that might... So you can kind of see the difference between this one and that one. I know it kind of went by, but if I were to bring this up even more, you'll be able to see. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. Eventually, if we bring it up too high, then you basically aren't getting any compression at all because the attack is set so high that it, it's not even kicking in. I would recommend setting this somewhere in here, probably below 10 milliseconds. Um, so I'm going to set this at like four, four milliseconds. We'll kind of take another listen. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. So then when it comes to the release, it's basically the exact opposite of the attack. The release controls how quickly the compressor releases. So if I were to come way over here, then it's going to release pretty much right away. And I think I spent too long, that might be my down. So again, we're basically having the same issue it, it, that we were having before, but the opposite way where the compressor is kicking in, but then it's releasing right away and we're not really getting all that much compression because of it. So the same holds true if I were to make this too long, then it's gonna take too long to release and it's gonna sound weird. And I think I spent too long, that might be my downfall. And it, it doesn't really sound all that weird because this is not a super extreme example, but you can hear that a little bit where it's just, it's not quite right. So I'm gonna set this back to where it was roughly, which I think was around 200 milliseconds. Now, personally, I don't really use the knee all that much, but what the knee does is it kind of changes where the threshold sort of kicks in. The compressor won't necessarily kick in immediately when the uh, audio signal goes above the threshold. So it's kind of like a little buffer there. So the sustain knob is another knob that I've never actually used before, but the idea behind it is that if it's releasing too quickly, you can increase the sustain knob and then it's basically going to hold out the length so that the compressor is not releasing too quickly. However, you shouldn't really ever need to worry about that. Now, the gain knob over here is output gain. So in terms of signal flow, everything we just did happens first, and then I can turn up the gain to increase the gain uh, back up to basically the level where it was before, or if we want even more gain, we can do that as well. But the idea behind the gain knob is that when you're doing compression, you know, you're kind of bringing the volume down so you can add the makeup gain to kind of get it back to the volume it was before. And just in case you're curious about the signal flow of this plugin, the compressor comes first in the signal flow, then the gain, then the limiter and the gate, and then the saturation.
Now we do have a noise gate feature within this compressor as well. Again, I don't really use a noise gate in this compressor. I'm not really a big fan of noise gates in general. However, if you are curious about how this works, you can hit F1 and the FL Studio manual will pop up and you can read all about that. You could also go up here to presets and then there are uh, I think a noise gate feature. So you can kind of see how the noise gate looks and how it works. The other thing you can do within this plugin is side chaining. And again, I'm not gonna talk about that within this tutorial. I actually prefer to side chain using the Fruity Balance. I've done tutorials on that in the past. So if you're curious about how I side chain within FL Studio, you can check out that video. I'm definitely planning on doing more of these FL Studio basic tutorials where I kind of show you how to use each one of these stock FL Studio plugins. So keep an eye out for that stuff. Hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. You can also join my Discord server, which I'll leave a link for in the description of this video. And if you're struggling with anything production related or if you're brand new to production, I do offer one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website. So check that out if you're interested and I will see you in the next video.